The definition of a buffer solution is a solution of either a weak acid and one of its conjugate bases or a weak base and one of its conjugate acids that minimizes changes in pH upon the addition of acid or base. In this video, we'll be breaking down this definition and finding out how exactly a buffer solution works. So you can see from the definition that we have two types of buffer solutions. One that has a weak acid and its conjugate base, and the other has a weak base and its conjugate acid. The principle for both types of buffers is very similar. So in this video, we'll only be looking at acidic buffers. But do remember that all of this mostly applies to basic buffers as well. So once again, an acidic buffer solution is one of a weak acid and one of its conjugate bases that minimizes changes in pH upon the addition of acid or base. So the point of a buffer solution is to maintain a relatively constant pH despite any changes in the surroundings, so that is changes in acidity or acidity. An example of this is our blood. It is very important that the pH of our blood does not rise above 7.4 and does not drop below 7.3. And this is achieved through a buffer system. Okay, let's have a look at how these buffer solutions work. So the first component of a buffer solution, of an acidic buffer solution, is a weak acid. So let's take, for example, propanoic acid. A weak acid will partially dissociate to form its conjugate base and hydrogen ions. That is what a weak acid is. That's the definition. It is an acid that partially dissociates in aqueous solution to release its conjugate base and hydrogen ions. We know that the dissociation is partial if we look at the value for the dissociation constant, Ka, which is 1.35 times 10 to the minus 5. This is a very low value, which means that the equilibrium lies far, far to the left, which means that we have lots of the undissociated propanoic acid and very little of the propanoate ions and hydrogen ions. In fact, this diagram is not at all to scale. There are much, much, much fewer propanoate and hydrogen ions. Okay, so this is our weak acid. We still, as I said, have very little conjugate base. So the second component of the buffer solution has to come from somewhere else. We can use a metal carboxylate, for example. In this case, we could say we'll add lithium propanoate. This is a source of the conjugate base of our weak acid. Why? Well, we know that this is an ionic compound and ionic compounds will fully dissociate in aqueous solution. They will ionize to form propanoate ions and lithium ions like this. Now we have our two components of the buffer system, the weak acids and the conjugate base. Now, since the ionic compound fully dissociates, we will not have any of it left, so we can ignore it. Likewise, we don't really care about lithium ions. They're not going to help us here at all. They're not part of the buffer solution. If we now combine these two equations together, we're going to end up with this equilibrium system. And this is what we call the buffer uh, solution system. This is the equilibrium that governs, essentially, how this buffer solution will work. Now let's have a look at the second part of the definition. It is a solution that minimizes changes in pH upon the addition of acid or base. So let's find out how this works. We'll use a diagrammatic representation to help us. So here are our molecules of propanoic acid. They're undissociated. And because the value of Ka is very low, the equilibrium is far to the left. And so we have very few dissociated molecules of acid. Well, in this case, let's say that one of them does dissociate. It will release the hydrogen ion and it will form uh, the propanoate ion, the conjugate base. There we go. But remember, we still need to have a source of the conjugate base. For example, we add lithium propanoate. That will fully dissociate. 
but we don't need to worry about the lithium ions. So here we have all the ingredients necessary for our buffer solution. Let's now have a look at what happens when we add acid. We would expect there not to be a change in pH. So how is this achieved? Let's say we add hydrochloric acid or any acid, it doesn't matter. We will get hydrogen ions being released. Those are shown here by the blue circles. The hydrogen ions will immediately react with the propanoate ions, like this. So essentially we've got the reverse reaction happening. We've got the formation of propanoic acid. You can now see that all of the hydrogen ions have been used up. They've effectively been mopped up by the propanoate ions that we have. Notice that it was really important that we added that lithium propanoate. That is what provided this reservoir, we can say, of the conjugate base. That is what provided the uh, other reactant for the removal of hydrogen ions. Great, so now we have no hydrogen ions and the pH stays as it was. Okay, but let's say we want to add more acid. If we continue adding hydrogen ions, yes, okay, one might react with the remaining propanoate ion, but what about the rest? Well, we can see that no more propanoate ions remain. We say that the reservoir has been exhausted. These remaining hydrogen ions have nothing else to react with. So the pH will decrease because we've had an increase in hydrogen ion concentration. The propanoate ion or the conjugate base reservoir has been exhausted. And so we say that the buffering capacity has been lost. If we look closely at the definition, it says that this buffer solution minimizes changes in pH. Really, it should stay in the definition upon the addition of small amounts of acid or base. A buffer solution only works when we're adding uh, very few um, acid or base amounts. It doesn't work if we add loads and loads of acid or base. The buffering capacity will be lost. We can explain how a buffer solution works in terms of Le Chatelier's principle. So, first of all, Addition of hydrogen ions, of course, increases their concentration. If we look at Le Chatelier's principle, we will see that the system will try to counteract the increase in hydrogen ion concentration, so that is the product of this reaction, by favouring the reverse reaction, by favouring the removal of the products to form the uh, original reagents. The hydrogen ions will react with the propanoate ions, we know that there are lots of them, they are in excess relative to the hydrogen ions because we've added the lithium propanoate. The equilibrium then shifts to the left hand side and in this way the uh, hydrogen ion concentration will decrease. And since the dissociation of the propanoic acid is negligible, yes we know it's a weak acid, then the equilibrium will be restored and a pH change in this way has been resisted. That is how the buffer solution works. But do remember that if we add any more acid such that it exceeds the buffering capacity, then uh, we won't be able to resist any changes in pH. Okay, now what about bases? If we're going to add an alkali, so OH minus ions, then what happens? Well, again, here we have our propanoic acid. Yes, some of it will dissociate, okay. Uh, we will also have our propanoate ions. And now here is our OH minus ion that we have added. One of two things can happen. So let's have a look at the first case. If we've only added a very small amount of base or alkali will have very few hydroxide ions, they might react with the hydrogen ions that have formed as a result of the dissociation of the propanoic acid. They will react together to form water. Water, as we know, has a pH of seven. It is neutral, so it does not affect the pH of the solution at all. In fact, the addition of hydroxide ions has had no effect. They have again been mopped up, inverted commas, by the hydrogen ions. And this time the reservoir was actually the weak acid. Now you can see that this won't really work if we're going to add more hydroxide ions uh, because we have very few hydrogen ions. If we were to add a weak base, 
yes, this would probably work. But if we start adding any stronger bases or we start adding any more concentrated bases, so more hydroxide ions, this might not necessarily work. So this time we can have a look at the second case. The hydroxide ions might simply react with the weak acid, with the propanoic acid, in a neutralization reaction. And that will form, again, propanoate ions and water. You can see now that we no longer have any hydroxide ions, so in this way we've resisted an increase in pH. So originally when we added the hydroxide ions, the concentration would have uh, increased, the pH would have also increased, but no, we've had a neutralization reaction thanks to the propanoic acid. We formed uh, propanoate ions and water, both of which do not affect the pH at all. If we use Le Chatelier's principle to explain this, then once again, addition of OH minus ions increases their concentration. Either the hydroxide ions will react with any hydrogen ions, and that will form water, as we can see here. The concentration of hydrogen ions decreases, yes, because they're reacting with the hydroxide ions that we've added. So equilibrium will shift to the right. So the equilibrium will shift to the right, to try to counteract this change. It will try to reform the hydrogen ions that have been lost. Or the other option is that the hydroxide ions react with the weak acid in the neutralization reaction. And there we go. Once again, we've resisted a change in pH. So that is how a buffer solution works. If you have any questions at all, then feel free to ask them in the comments. Thank you very much. See you next time. Goodbye.